Hey guys, TV Production Guy here, back with another basic Final Cut Pro tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about uh, filter effects and how to use them and how to manipulate them in your timeline. Alright, let's go ahead first with opening up Final Cut Pro. We have our shots already laid out on our timeline from our, our last lesson. We'll start with the first shot. We're gonna add some start. I'm gonna start showing you some more advanced effects. So we'll come up here into our bins to the effects tab. Last time I showed you how to use video transitions. Next, we're gonna go to the video filters tabs. Now this is has all sorts of tabs. You can click in them once you're in video filters to blurs, to glows, uh, to image control, and we'll go through some of these and show you how to use them first thing you need to realize is once you double click on a clip down in in your timeline so I'll use this ghost ship signs here I'm going to double click it we already showed you the motion tab right next to the motion tab is the filters tab and this tab you can use to put filters from your effects palette in to your actual video down in your timeline so I'm going to open up my blurs bin and I'm going to come down to Gaussian blur I'm going to pull it on and watch how this shot reacts to this. As I pull it up, it gets blurry. So you just scan through this when we get to the sign there, you can see it. Well, you you know, I can either have it a non-blurry and then have it come in blurry. Now how we use this is is we can come back to the beginning of the shot, set a keyframe, and we'll play. And let's say we went to we can go a little bit farther. Let's say we went to right here. I'll set another keyframe. I'll come back to my first keyframe and I'm going to raise up so there's a high amount of blur in the very beginning. So when we watch this back and I'll turn off the sound to the computer so we don't have to hear the sound. Spacebar to play and you can see it starts out blurry and then it comes out of the blur. Starts out blurry and comes out of the blur as it gets to the sign. Alright we can click on the click on the Gaussian blur and hit delete to remove it and let's try something else let's try a glow so I, I use the bloom and I can put the bloom on this second clip guy popping out and what happens is we'll double click on this and you can see it's up here down the preview and we can use our arrow keys to go back to the left to the ghost ship sign and then here's our one with the glow on it so let's build the glow so we'll come up here, we'll come to the first frame, and we know that because we see the X on the screen. If I hit back, there's no X, so we know in the other shot. Here's the first X of this scene. Let's start with giving a keyframe to the fresh threshold. We'll pull this way down so it blows up like a glow. And then we'll watch, and where we want to, want to stop, we'll hit stop. We'll set it first stop by hitting spacebar. We'll set another keyframe and bring this down so there's no longer a glow in it. Now let's watch that back. We could have the glow come back up by coming down to the timeline a little bit more and having the glow, setting another keyframe and having bringing the glow back down. So let's watch that. Glow and the low glow goes away and then the glow comes back. Okay, we can click on this bloom right here and hit delete to remove it. Let's come, we'll close up the glow, glow bit up in the filters tab. And let's go to image control. Let's say I wanted to put a sepia tone on my shot. So here's this shot. I'm going to grab the sepia and I'm going to drop it on the shot. And now it has given it a red tint. If I double click on this, it'll open up in the filters tab, and I can change that orangey, this says brown, but I look more red to me, we can put an actual red tint on it, now you can see it's really red, and that's like a tint, we'll play this through, you can see it's all over the other clip, you might want to use this for something other than, you wouldn't use it in this instance, but it's something good to see, let's click on the CP and we'll, cl we'll cut that one out, delete that one out, now let's say maybe we wanted this to be black and white. We could grab the tint and put the tint on there, and now you can see the shot is now a tint black and white color. All right, let's come up here, click on the tint in the filters tab, and we'll delete it out. OK, 
Okay, let's come back into our filters bin and we'll close the image control. Uh, let's go to stylize. And stylize, there's a couple different things you can use. Here's a vignette. We'll grab the vignette and this will put a little, you can kind of see it, but I'll work with it. Double click, open up our filters tab and it has a slight vignette around. We'll put the blur amount up a little bit. We'll get the size to come in. Now you're starting to see it a little bit more. And you just mess with your tabs to get it where you want, to your taste. So it puts that little blur around it. Almost gives it like a spot shadow. All right. We can come up, click on Vignette, delete that one out. We'll come out of the stylized bin and uh, in the filters bin. Let's go to perspective. Let's say I'm watching this one with this guy's head popping out, but you know, I'd really like to have the guy pop out from the opposite direction. We can come to our perspectives folder, and under there we have a, a filter called flop, where we're actually flop the, the image to the opposite side. So let's go ahead and put that on this, this bin, on this clip, and you can see that the shot has now flip flopped. We can come up here, delete this off of this, delete this filter off of this clip. And within all these, these are just a bunch of filters you can you can work with to change your 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 uh, clips on the timeline, your video on the timeline. Um, I'll let you know there is a color corrector here. Here's a three-way color corrector. That's the one I would recommend using. Now it's once you go to open up this one, you can click up in here. It'll be in the filters tab right here, but there'll also be its own little color corrector three-way that you click on, and then that's where you move your whites or whites around when you're color correcting to match what you're looking for: your whites, your blacks, and your medium, your midtones, saturation. You can actually pull your saturation all the way down to get the black and white effect. We'll put that back where it is. I don't want this on here, so I'm going to click filter and actually just delete this out. One other thing I want to show you before um, we finish up this section is I'm going to put another blur back on. I'll put this Gaussian blur back on. Whoops, wrong one. Put the first Gaussian blur back on. I'm going to zoom this up and you can see how he has now out, gone out of zoom. If I check this box right here, uncheck it, it'll take the blur away. So the effect, even though it's on there, it will no longer be visible. So right now that effect is not there. If I decide, you know what, I do want it on there, I can click and it'll come back on. What I can do is, say I want to put this on all my other shots, I can come up here, click on the Gaussian blur, hit Command C to copy it, and then come down to my other shot, this ghost ship sign, double click it to open it up in the preview window, it's filters tabs, filters tab, and Command V to paste that blur that we just made into this shot. So now both these shots have a strong blur on it. Obviously that's probably not something you're going to want to use for your, your project or your final project, but it's, it's just so you, you know how, the, uh, how things work in, in Final Cut and how you can paste, how you can copy and paste your filters onto different clips. Let's go ahead and delete those off. I'll delete off the first clip, then I'll open up the second clip and click and delete it off of the second clip. So why don't you go ahead, take your time, Practice, put any shots you want down on the timeline, and work with all these different filters. There's plenty of them, whether stylize, perspective, image control, and you can work with these and work with them, add them, open them up in your, your filters tab, and mess with the preferences that they already have. All right, guys, this is TV Production Guy signing off.